waning. This video contains mild blasphemy, moderate sexual references and nameless evils. Palazengio. Hi guys, I'm back with another Top X video. This time, as requested, the Top X worst sounding keyboard switches of all time. Just like before, it has to be native, unmodded combinations, so lubed or whatever doesn't count, and as with most videos, bog standard rubber dome boards have been disqualified as well. As with the best sounding switches video, there will be a short typing demo after each item, and a very short comparison at the end of the list as well. This was actually not an easy video to do, as most mechanical switches sound pretty good, so finding enough dirt wasn't all that easy. But that said, a few stinkers do really stand out from the rest. Note that the sound doesn't necessarily say anything about the key feel itself. It might feel great, but at least they sound like splatter poop. Starting at number 7, we've actually got a good example of this, because they're the first generation Ace Pad Tech Hall Effect switches. These switches are actually really good linear switches. They got into the best linear switches list, but before several redesigns of the keyboards, they sounded really horrible. Plasticky and rattly, and the durable but cheap keycaps on them didn't make it any better. Next up at number 6, we've got a notorious stinker, the infamously awful Smith Corona Leaf Springs. Fuck me for having to type on this one again. Disregarding the unparalleled, almost interdimensional fuckness of its key feel, the sound is also really quite bad. The long, slender leaf springs at the back produce a very strange tinny noise. And typing on it at speed makes it sound like you're trying to summon the god of spoons. Although the switches are so bad that typing at speed on it is virtually impossible. At number 5, I have no idea why I keep coming back to this carcinogenic cunt canoe, but it's Amstrad spring over membrane again. Just leave me alone, you bastarding bitch beaver! The big problem here is the looseness of the springs inside the switches, as well as the shitness of the build. You know how some keyboards feel and sound really nicely dense and taut? Well, this one is the exact opposite. It sounds so hollow and empty that I can only guess its density is near that of a gas, in which case this keyboard is probably a fart. And this leads to this ghastly, almost haunting, reverberating spring sound. I mean, even if you look past the unforgivable sin of its key feel, you still have to contend with this. Following up with number 4, where it starts to get weird, with Fataba MA clicky switches. These switches aren't necessarily bad, they're just really bizarre, famously more tactile on the upstroke than on the downstroke, among others. They use a spiral plate spring, but these plate springs apparently have a lot of room to maneuver in because the sound that they produce is practically out of this world. I don't know any other switches that sound like this. So despite the weakness of the tactile events, these switches very much appear to have been designed to be clicky. But what sort of dick cheese sniffing cockmonger thought that this would make a good clicky sound? It's not even a click, it's more of a twang or something, or maybe a very small singing saw. But that's not the last we see of Futaba, because next up is all their vintage linear switches. Remember that scene from Monty Python where some guy makes a piano out of mice that he bashes with a hammer to make them squeak? Well, listen to this. Now, granted, this one has an above average mouse factor, but all five or six of these that I've had over the years all squeaked. It's horrendous, it makes my skin crawl, it's animal cruelty on a keyboard. 
The only reason it's not higher up is because some of them don't have this squeak, and the pitch of its stock, if you can reach it at least, is still somewhat deep-ish. But overall, it still sounds like typing from beyond the grave. Next up, at number two, the clicky switch based on the design that wasn't even meant to be clicky, Cherry MX Blue. Intended just to cause hysteresis with the click, or rather rattle, just a byproduct of the design, the original version, MX White, was greased in order to suppress the hideous noise. But as the demand for clicky switches grew, they later introduced Cherry MX Blue in which they took out the grease and the sound was allowed to run rampant. In all its loud, plasticky, powdery, spineless, rattly, high-pitched glory. Roger me sideways and don't forget the apple sauce. These sound awful. And finally, at number one, we have what can't be much of a surprise to many people, namely several types of MX Blue clone, including Utamu, Gatoron, and Ajaz Blue. As if MX Blue wasn't horrible enough to listen to already, these take the volume and tone from their cherry cousins, and they turn them both up from loud and high pitched to deafening and near supersonic, almost as if the switches are tiny little plastic banshees that make MX Blue sound like rubber domes by comparison. I have no idea what causes the sound to get so much louder and more obnoxious, but whatever it is, it's about as good an idea as taking a piss against an electric fence. The sound, if I can call it that, is so distinctive that I can regularly tell from gameplay chatter that someone is using a keyboard with MX Blue clones. I can literally hear them type from the other side of the world. This eardrum wrecking, mind shattering invention is enough to drive you up the wall, and I well remember the days I was testing these when my online buddies kept complaining about the racket it put out. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I apologize for subjecting you to even a fraction of these twatastic little turbo cunts. That's it for this video guys, the Top X series will return at some point in the future with the most silent keyboard switches as well, just waiting for a few more set pieces. For now, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and let me know in the comments below what you think the worst sounding switches of all time are.